The open source messenger Briar, removed from the Play Store, no valid reasons. The open source Monero.com wallet, removed, no valid reasons. Element, an open source chat application, removed. Fair email, removed. These were all resolved. But these stories and the countless others reveal the overwhelming control Google has on Android devices. Today we'll discuss why that is, and more importantly, what you can do about it. You're at the whim of what happens to apps and their developers on the Play Store. If your favorite app is delisted, you're screwed, and it can happen for many reasons. Some apps are never listed for obvious reasons, like Newpipe, the open source video app that basically gives you a paid YouTube client, which Google, for certain reasons, just doesn't allow. Google can also make broad decisions that impact you. Most recently, Russian users haven't been getting security updates for some of their apps. And a lot of times, this actually happens by accident, embarrassingly enough. Google constantly makes mistakes, which leads to just random app removals. Apps being removed is a headache for users and developers. But another issue is you're required to have a Google account to simply even use the Play Store, which not only contributes to their control, but also poses a privacy concern to people who don't want Google knowing the apps they install. To put it simply, Google has effectively made the world dependent on them to download applications, which on Android can be done from anywhere. They're pushing Android away from the open ecosystem it's supposed to be to more of the walled garden that we find on iOS. <sighs> now, fortunately for us, Android as of today is still more open than iOS and allows you to take action. Here are four options to reclaim control of your device today. Aurora is an open source app store that gets apps directly from the Play Store without needing a Google account. This means you get a layer of privacy and it being open source is great for transparency, in addition to bringing compatibility to de-Google devices without Google Play services, which are required for the Play Store, but not for Aurora. The only issue is Aurora still delivers apps from the Play Store, so it doesn't address the issue of apps just being randomly delisted. But that doesn't mean it isn't an overall improvement. And to further speak to this reliance that Aurora has on Google, um, not too long ago, Aurora was pretty much down and not working for universally everybody for an extended amount of time. And there were some reports of Google shutting down some Aurora specific accounts. This was unclear. It doesn't matter. The point is you have to remember that all of these front ends are still directly reliant on Google. Even though you're kind of bypassing the privacy issues of Google when you log in anonymously, you have to still acknowledge that you are still going through Google. And Google really at any point in time can likely do a lot to stop projects like Aurora from existing, which I hope never happens. I think Aurora is a necessary tool for people on custom ROMs who aren't using Google Play services, but we just have to keep in mind that these are still reliant on Google. And also to download Aurora, you need F-Droid, which is actually our second solution. F-Droid is an app store with its own selection of apps. The selling point is everything is open source and all of the apps are scanned for privacy issues to ensure whatever you download is trusted. Because of these requirements, while some apps from the Play Store may also be here, the selection is overall tiny and you're unlikely to find most of your apps. One tip to make this a bit better is F-Droid allows you to add any repository, so you can gain access to more apps through something like Izzy Android's repo. The real selling point of F-Droid is that you can always host your own repository, so there's no such thing as deplatforming or having your app removed because you can always host your own repo. So even if the F-Droid developers and every other person wanted your app removed from F-Droid, you could always just host your own repository, which people can manually add, and then they can still fetch updates for your application. It's truly an independent platform for people who want to make it an independent platform. And lots of projects actually host their own repositories. Now, despite all the positivity I've communicated about F-Droid, keep in mind that it is not foolproof. In fact, there have been a couple security issues that have come up in F-Droid applications. Just because it's on F-Droid doesn't mean it's entirely safe and doesn't mean that something bad can't happen to you. Just something to think about. Third, manual installations. Apps like the Secure Messenger Signal allow you to download an APK directly from their site to install the app manually. And in Signal's case, this APK actually auto-updates itself without needing any app store. So check if the apps you're reliant on, like Signal, offer manual installations, though we always recommend verifying the download to make sure it's safe and to make sure you're getting APKs from trusted sources, not just random websites. Before our fourth mention, I did want to throw in a quick little honorable mention here, and it's things like Obtanium, which allow you to automatically fetch updates from a repository online, 
but keep in mind, uh, this is a little bit more finicky than maybe just using F-Droid. So this isn't something that's ever going to replace the Google Play Store or Aurora, or it's even gonna be a little trickier probably than F-Droid, but it is an honorable mention and it is an other possible avenue that you can use to become more independent from any of these alternative options that we're going through today. And fourth, Progressive Web Apps, or PWAs. Some amazing services like Crypti have dedicated themselves to only running in your browser, allowing them to bypass app stores altogether. Even if something doesn't offer a formal PWA, ask yourself if you need the app. If not, see if you can just get by with the mobile site. Limiting the number of apps on your phone is generally great for privacy and security and also lessens your reliance on centralized app stores. Behind the scenes detail here, most of this video that wasn't recorded in this set that you're seeing right now was recorded last year and this is before Apple's major push towards supporting web apps. We're really starting to see a new era of web apps come out there and I really want to highlight for all of you that so many of the things you use can be used as web apps. Seriously. Look at all these things. Every time I download something, I try to look to see if it offers an exclusive web app. And even if it doesn't, I still like to just add the website to my operating system in any capacity. I do everything possible to avoid installing software because it gives me so much finer control over what applications can do. When I have something as a web app, it allows me to have ad blockers in any web app I want. It allows me to stop trackers in those web apps. It allows me to block elements if I wanna stop any scripts and I want to customize things. Maybe I hate the trending tab on Twitter. I can just inspect element those things out of existence. So yeah, I love web apps and actually I personally use them for almost everything when I can, unless there's a very exclusive feature offered by something um, that can only be found in a native client or the web app is just ass. And in that case, that's actually the developer's fault like 99% of the time. So uh, there's very few situations where the web app is bad because it's impossible to make a good web app. I say if Tinder can do it, anyone can do it. The best thing though, is to combine all of the methods we talked about. See if a service you're using can be used in just your browser. If not, see if there's a manual installation. If not, see if the app or a good alternative is on F-Droid. And if none of that works, use Aurora to just download the app itself like it's the Play Store. The really cool thing with Android is you can have multiple app stores. So there's no reason you who's watching this right now shouldn't download and play around with F-Droid and Aurora right now alongside the Play Store. There's just nothing to lose. By doing this, you directly make a difference for yourself, for developers, and everyone else since it sends Google a message that the world does not want a closed app ecosystem like iOS. We actually made a video covering our five favorite apps on F-Droid. So if you're inspired to make a difference and download F-Droid right now, go check out that video to help you get started with some apps. We'll see you over there and we'll see you next time on TechLore.